Oh, hello, inner girls and differentials. It's Dalt. Welcome back to my kitchen. And today, I'll be serving you a guide on how to make XY standard decks. Now, the first question you gotta ask is, wait, why should I listen to this guy? And I can say from experience, I've been building nothing but XY standard decks for the past couple months, even before it was not XY standard. So, the thought process, as well as the experience from just trying different things within the XY standard to make these decks worth is something I'd like to share with you today. So let's get started. There could be four main uh, separate parts when I think about making a deck. First of all, where are my two frontline Pokemons, the, my energy sets, the deck engine, and the everything else category. So let's start off with the Pokemon. All right, so let's talk about the Pokemons. Now, in all my deck videos, you're going to find a pair of two Pokemons that help complement each other. Now, there are two categories. First of all is your Powerhouse, which is generally a Pokemon EX. So, take Garvor for example, 170 hit points and Shining Wind, 100 damage attacks. Big numbers, easy to understand why these cards just help drive your deck and build momentum and just just defeat your opponent's Pokemon. Now, it's not always a Pokemon EX. They are generally what's gonna be your core uh, powerhouse. Sometimes you can squeeze into stage one or two if it's really good in some way, but usually it's EX Pokemon, Mega Pokemon. So that's gonna be one of your pair. And the other one can possibly be a utility Pokemon. So take Xerneas for example. Doesn't have that many hit points. It's attack, you have to discard energy unlike uh, God of War's, but Geomancy, the utility, it provides energies for your deck much faster than the rate which you normally could uh, without it. So Geomancy, two more energies per turn which you can attach. So a total of three energies, including the one that you regularly use, and you're just gonna overwhelm your opponent by having your cards or your Pokemon more ready faster than them. Now, Xerneas is just an example. You can see that maybe Deoxys can help draw cards or Landorus charges energy for fighting decks, that sort of thing. So, go through back through all my videos, you're gonna see a pair of uh, these cards. Sometimes it can be utility in a, well, EX Pokemon, sometimes the EX and the EX Pokemons because they help balance each other's out weakness or maybe they complement each other in some way. So, that is your core, and now let's move on to All right. easy topic. So energies. the next category is energies, and you're like, really? I mean, energies are so obvious. Well, is he really gonna talk about that, man? Yes, it's just a few quirks, so we're gonna go over them very quickly. Now, obviously, you need to attach energies to your Pokemon to actually attack, but in a few cases, we gotta talk about like some exceptions to the rule. Now. Let's start off with the amount of energies you need is around, I say 14 to be comfortable. Sometimes they go less, sometimes they go more, depending on how the deck is set up. And generally it's just one element, unless you're using the tool. Now, how does that actually work? So let's say that if Pokemon only needed one dark energy like Veltal, and the rest could be anything else, like maybe fairy energy. So you could uh, put actually two elements in the deck if the attack cost is very lenient. So I would maybe split my energy up. Um, this may not be a good example for Veltal, but five dark energies and three fairy energies. If my fairy energy Pokemon just like only need one, like Florgus, for example. So I would say uh, also special energies count towards this limit. Now in double colors energies case, it's an energy, it charges up your Pokemon and can charge them up much faster than a basic energy can, and these would count towards, well, your 14. Also, trainers will count too, such as Professor's Letter, because drawing this card is essentially drawing energy. So, yes, it's a trainer, but add this towards your energy count. And things like energy retrieval, not as reliable, but well, it also counts as energy cards. So. 14s are very nice numbers, and these are just little quirks which you can help to make your decks. 
Yeah. Right. The next category is gonna be your deck engine. Basically, the set of cards which you use to continuously refresh your hand once you play everything. Now, there are probably around the 10 to 14 of these cards in your deck. And for the black and white engine, it looks like this. So we have N, and N is very iconic because it's the card that you play to when you're out of cards, you just shuffle your hand uh, back into your deck, you lose nothing and draw up to six cards, which is the amount of pride cards you start with. And not only that, your opponent, when they play their end, it shuffles your hand for you and usually it just mutually just fills up well, each other's hand and that's kind of gone away, so it really sucks. Now another iconic card that's staying with us still is Professor Chudimer. Professor Sycamore is going to be there, but you just discard your hand, draw seven more cards, and if you don't have any cards in the first place in your hand, it's pretty much doesn't even matter. So seven cards is quite a lot. You're going to have what you need, almost for sure. Now, what was pretty much killing everyone's hands was the use of Ultra Ball. Now, Ultra Ball is a great item. It gets you the Pokemon dead. You need guarantee you just have to discard two cards from your hand. Obviously, it's gonna be the cards that you don't need the most, but think about it. When you play Ultra Ball, you lose that Ultra Ball and the two cards from your hand for a total of three cards. Your hand is gonna be very, very small, which is why you just comboed it with N, or your opponent's gonna play N for you, or Juniper, and this is how card flow works in the black and white standard. Now there are going to be other cards that sort of add to this, which is Verse Seeker, which lets you play N, Juniper, N, or Caress, which when uh, late or mid game, there are just going to be many bench Pokemons. You're going to have a huge draw once you play Caress. And I would put this into Shaman or Jirachi, basically Pokemons that just help with card flow. They count as your deck engine in this category, so they don't have to be trainers. And okay, this is supposed to be Skyla. I don't know what happened to her, but these are trainers. Well, that gets you more trainers. So this is going to be the primary deck engine. At least for the black and white standard. Now X Y, it's going to be a little different. So let's move on. Moving on to the X Y standard, it's going to suck because you're losing a lot. Of more robust trainers that were in black and white. Say with N, your opponent was reshuffling your hand for you, in a way. So you were helping each other out. Caress was had a such big card draw potential, like even 10 or more cards, and that's going away. So how do you adjust? Well, you just get used to the new cards. Starting with Shauna. Now Shauna is going to be your most reliable trainer. It's definitely put four in there. There's almost nothing wrong when you play Shauna. So you have a bad hand, Sh reshuffle it, get five more cards. You don't have any cards in your hand. Reshuffle it, get five more cards. You don't have as many prizes, that's okay, because N depends on prizes, Shauna doesn't. Very, very reliable, just put four of them in there. Now, Professor Juniper technically isn't going away. I mean, it's Professor Sycamore now. He's a guy, he's not so handsome, but hey, same exact effect. Just card your hand, draw seven more cards, good draw trainer. Now, I'm gonna bring up Tierno, which you're like, what? Why would you bring this up? Now, a lot of people don't like Tierno because it wasn't the right card for the last meta because, because reshuffling your hand for five cards, drawing seven more cards was just much better, especially when comboed with Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball destroys three cards in your hand and you can generally play most of your hands pretty quickly because black and white standard focused on basic Pokemons and decks in which, well, you could just drop everything out. XY standard is going to focus more on evolutions, mega evolutions, those spearlings, evolving your stage 2, especially with the new uh, expansion break coming up. So, reshuffling and discarding your hand may not be the best thing to do in every case, which is why I'm going to make the case for Tiano, it may work and decks. I've done it before in which where keeping my hand is more important than reshuffling and discarding them. So with Tiano, with the deck right deck setup, 
Like maybe less ultra balls, maybe some roller skates. He'll work, especially when saving your hand is important. Now, Verse Seeker is still going to be there. Ultra Wall Ball is going to be there. Skyla is coming back, but for now, well, Trainer Mail, almost the same exact thing. It's an item. You don't lose your support. Uh, your one support you get every turn, but it's not going to be as reliable. So, technically, this is kind of like an okay Skyla. Shaman is still there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add in Pokemon Fan Club. I know it's been around, but it's... It's a little weird. Now, your deck is mainly up with strong basic Pokemon. So you're not going to worry too much about this. But if you're dealing with stage 2s, like a, maybe a Togepi that one really wants to be a Togekiss, Pokemon will help out. Especially when you need... Your deck really depends on a core card to function and you can't always right now. Now, uh, moving on, we have Teammates. I've never used this card because pretty much you have to me a losing condition where your Pokemon gets knocked out so I had to bring it up it is a supporter and this is why I don't use it same reason for Ace Trainer because of the conditional requirement where your Pokemon pretty much has to be knocked out and your opponent is winning so yes you can put them in your deck but you can see like some situations where you might not ever even be able to play these cards so these are good trainers you should look at. We're going to move on to the final category. Oh, All right. The we're almost done. So the miscellaneous category is exactly how it sounds. Cards that just don't fit into those previous categories, such as Lysander drags out one of your Pokemon or opponent's Pokemon and just puts them in quite a bad position. And everyone's going to say, yes, Lysander, do it. Put three in your deck. Now, something else that maybe miscellaneous category is Escape Rope gives your Pokemon a free retreat and forces your opponent to switch out with one of the Pokemon they have to choose, but well, you get the choice to play it, which makes it uh, quite an annoying fun card to play. Yep, switch will work, but you know, this one, this one's definitely more fun. Now, Crushing Hammer definitely can fit in any deck. Slows your opponent down, removes their energy, extremely annoying when uh, it goes heads. You can use the Enhanced Hammer, which uses special energies only. And you can see miscellaneous categories does something quite well to help you out. Now, there's also Stadiums, which uh, depending on the Stadium's effect and what deck you're using, adds a persistent effect to help you out, like Fairy Garden. Free Retreat costs. Don't even have to put Escape Rope or something. I'm going to make the argument that some Sage 2s that are really for supporting could actually fit in this category as well doesn't have to be trainers so maybe my champ I yeah I can attack with it but I might not ever even want to because it's for nice ability it has so those are the core cards uh, Pokemon deck let's maybe just quickly build one just to see how so for the last thing I'm gonna do I'm just gonna build a completely new deck based on the things I've talked about in this video so creating a new standard deck I'm gonna pick psychic arbitrarily just cuz. Just cuz. Now, let's start off with a core Pokemon, such as Gengar EX. Tons of hit points. Maybe not that strong as the EX because of its lower damage, but it's okay. It's just an example. Gengar, it is. Now, I'm gonna pick out a good compliment like Toxicroak. Here we go. A little bit bigger numbers, and it has a weakness to Psychic compared to Gengar, who has a weakness. To dark so these do help balance each other out maybe in a psychic for a psychic deck situation so I'm gonna add in Deoxys now don't always have to have a utility type I just can in this case because it's such a great card so let's add in Deoxys for a total of eight core Pokemon's it draws me more cards those more cards can help build momentum it's also a nice attack now, moving on to energies, I'm going to use Psychic Energies. Because they all use Psychic Energies to attack. So let's put in like five of them. And usually I put more, but I know there's something called Mystery Energy. Which pretty much gives my Pokemon free retreat when I attach it to them. Two less retreat costs. All of them have two less retreat costs, so it's completely free. And let's put in Double Colorless Energy, because that helps Gengar charge up instantaneously. If gets one of these so there we go 12 energy cards and now I'm gonna use professor's letter 
Now it's a trainer, but it gets me energy and almost works the same way. So this is about 14. I, don't know, I like that number. And let's move on to draw supporter. So I'm going to use Shauna. And because I said Shauna was just a very, very safe card, definitely put four of her in there. And Juniper's not Juniper anymore. It's Sycamore. So let's go ahead and put uh, some Sycamores in. And yep, there we go. Sounds good. And I'm going to put some Verse Seekers. There we go. Three Verse Seekers. And maybe a couple Ultra Balls. Yeah. So we're going to go in, type in Ultra Balls. And I think three of them might be good enough. This is still okay. I probably need something a little bit extra. So I'm going to put Shaman in. Now with, um, I guess, one is enough. It takes a decent amount of bench space. Deoxys, Shaman, all these draw trainers, they might be enough. But to add a little bit of extra, I'm going to add in a couple trainer mail. So then I can, if I don't grab Sycamore or if I don't grab Shauna, maybe a trainer mail might lead into them. So there we go, bridging these two uh, trainer cards. And I think that's good for trainers. Let's move on to the miscellaneous category. Oh man, you can see that's pretty big left. So, man, I'm going to put in uh, Lysander. Let's just start off with Lysander. He definitely needs to be in there. Now, I probably shouldn't play escape ropes and switches because I already got those energies. But for just for example, we're going to put an escape rope in there in case I don't get a mystery energy. So, escape rope, Lysander. This looks like a good core. Got 15 more cards to fill. You know what? Poker tools. Don't have any of those. Let's use the most common one, which is Muscle Band. More damage now that Gengar and Tonka's Crow looks much more dangerous. Let's just stick four of them in there. Yeah, four. And now, oh, I don't have a stadium. I could play a Paint Roller, you know, to maybe discard my opponent's stadium. Or if I got one myself, I can use Dimension Valley, which gives my Psychic Pokemon uh, one less attack, or at least if there's colors. So there we go, Psychic Pokemons, one less energy, colorless energy, to attack, that's three, man, this is tough. Now, you know, I, I'm going to put enhanced uh, hammers, not enhanced hammer, let's just put some crushing hammers in, there we go, and you know, my opponent might have some really annoying abilities, so I could use the Hex Maniac, there we go, let's just put one in there, and we're Almost done. Oh man, this is really tough. Like the deck building is fun. So you know what? Let's just go ahead and put a single enhanced hammer. I've never actually used this card. Enhanced hammer. There we go. One space left. Oh, two. I did something. Two enhanced hammers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's add in another training model. Yep. There we go. And. Totally, totally did that so well. We'll call this the Mock Psychic Deck. Yeah, this is the naming it is the most important part. Picking a purple coin, and yeah, that's good enough. So, do we really want to try it out? Maybe another episode. So, I hope you found something useful, and this helps you out with your deck building. So, you know, there's a Pokemon video coming soon this Friday, and. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.